Selections aren't just useful for removing backgrounds in Photoshop, and I want to show you three great ways to utilize selections in different ways to level up your editing. But be sure to stick around until the end because in the third example, you'll learn a technique that will make your life a lot easier. Hey friend, Brendan here from BeWillCreative.com, and the first example that we're going to use our selections for is to selectively change colors in our photo when we can't easily isolate a color range. So for example, if you want to change the color of of an object or maybe clothing on your subjects, then this is a great method that you can use because as you're about to see here, there's a little bit of an issue that you might run into when changing colors without selections. So to begin, I'm going to change the colors using the hue saturation adjustment layer. So here in the adjustments panel, I'll go to the hue saturation adjustment and click on that. This will create a new hue saturation adjustment layer directly above my image layer in this particular case. And let's go and try to change the color of this dog's toque. Now, Generally, I would maybe go from the master channel and now go to the yellows because that's going to be the color of the toque. And from there, I could go and adjust the hue. However, look what happens if I wanted to drastically change the hue of this toque. As you can see, there's also yellow in the dog's fur, which means that whatever hue adjustment I make here is also going to affect the color of the dog. So this is very common in a lot of photos where you have multiple of the same color around your image. For example, example, your subject is wearing a blue shirt and there's a blue sky behind them. Both of those colors are going to change at the same time. However, with the help of a selection, we can work around this pretty easily. So I'm going to begin by clicking on the hue saturation adjustment layer and just press delete to remove it completely. And we're going to start by creating a selection. Now, since I want to only select this two here, I'm going to use the object selection tool. Going over to the toolbar, I'll click and hold on the object selection tool. You might find it underneath the quick selection tool or the magic wand tool, but I have it right here, the object selection tool. And with the mode set to lasso, hard edge enabled and sample all layers can be unchecked or checked. It does not matter in this case. But now what we're going to do is just click and drag around the outside of this toque or whatever object you're trying to change the color of. And this will define the area for Photoshop to make a selection inside of. So something like this looks good. I'll let go and Photoshop will automatically snap your selection to whatever edges are inside of that lasso selection area. So in this case, we have our toque selected. Now with this active selection, I can use this to now apply it onto the hue saturation adjustment layer mask. So with this active selection indicated by those marching ants here, I'll now once again go to my adjustments panel and then click on the hue saturation adjustment. This time you'll notice that the hue saturation adjustment layer mask has this white blob inside of it. And this is the active area of our selection from previously. So although our selection has disappeared from our image, it is now applied onto the layer mask, which is what will happen whenever you have an active selection and then you create a new adjustment layer. That selection area will be applied onto the mask as you see here. And in the world of layer masks, white is 100% visible and black is 100% transparent, meaning I can go and even adjust the master channel of this hue saturation adjustment. And look what happens just by moving this one way or the other. And in the master channel, by the way, this would be editing every single color in the image. But because we use that selection and then it was applied onto this layer mask automatically, it's really easy to isolate our adjustments without any extra work involved. Now to take this one step further, and get a little bit of a better result for our color, I could click on the colorize option here, which will apply a solid color to the selection area. Now I could go and choose a different color based on the saturation, lightness, and hue that I would like for this particular toque. Let's say I wanna go for like a red toque like this or a burgundy kind of color. So I'll set my adjustments like so. And then zooming in, you might find that there's a little bit of color fringing just around the edge. You can still see some of that yellow that is left over. And this can happen sometimes if your selection wasn't totally perfect, but luckily that's easy to touch up by clicking on your hue saturation layer mask, grabbing the brush tool by pressing B, then using a nice soft round brush. We will set the brush mode to normal, opacity and flow at 100%, and then we can just scale down our brush and paint along those fringed areas to add in that extra color 
to make everything look really nice for the final result. So this is something that you might run into with some images, but you'll always see it whenever you zoom in to take a closer look. So just take a moment to touch these things up after you have made your selection and applied your adjustment. So now this looks pretty good to me right around here. And then zooming out, we now have changed the color of this dog's toque without affecting any of the other similar yellow colors within the image. So this is really helpful whenever you're changing the colors of objects and you can't isolate the color with the hue saturation adjustment by itself. So now this brings us into our second example. In our second example here we have our first image and then beneath it we have an empty frame. So let's say that I would like to have this image to look as if it's sitting inside of this frame like so. So essentially what we need to do is just crop our layer to fit within this specific area. Now the problem that most people run into is that if you were to crop a layer you might be thinking okay I need to grab the crop tool. But if you grab the crop tool by pressing C, you'll notice that this actually will affect the entire canvas and not just one particular layer. So if I press the check mark to commit to that, now the entire image is cropped regardless of what layers were involved in it. So undoing this by pressing Command or Control Z, what we can do instead is use a selection to crop an individual layer, and this is the second way that you can use selections to improve your editing. So in this particular case, I have a basically a square to create a selection around, and the easiest way to create this selection would be with the marquee tool. So going up to the toolbar and selecting the rectangular marquee tool, or you can just press M on your keyboard, I'll make sure the feather is set to zero pixels, and now I can just go and click on this corner of the frame, drag down like so, and basically just make that selection fill the area that I want my image to be visible. So now with this complete, I have an active selection covering the area that I want to crop my topmost image layer to fit inside of. So with this complete, I'll turn back on my layer one in this case, and we have a few different options that we can do. The first option that you can do is simply right click inside of that selection and go layer via copy. And and this will create a copy of that selection area from your original image on a separate layer like so. However, the downside of this is that whatever is inside of that selection area is stuck that way. You can't move things around at all. So what I would recommend doing instead, I'll just undo this by pressing Command or Control Z. I still have this active selection once again. This time we're going to add it to a layer mask so that we have the option to move it around within the final selection area and it's non-destructive. So with that active selection and that image layer selected, I'll click on the layer mask icon to apply that active selection onto the layer mask, meaning that this white box on the layer mask is the visible area of this particular layer inside of this frame. Now, like I said, we can now use this layer mask to move the image separate from our selection area, simply by clicking on the link icon and then clicking on the image layer thumbnail to ensure that there's this white box around it like so. Now with that white box around the image layer thumbnail, we can grab the move tool by pressing V and with the show transform controls option enabled up here, I can just go and move this separate from the selection area, which is represented by that layer mask so I can scale this and move it around in this photo frame so I can get the perfect framing for this image without too much extra work. So pressing the check mark to commit to that, we have now successfully cropped our image into this frame and you could add a few extra layer style effects like a drop shadow or something like that to make it blend a little bit better around the edge of this mat, but that is something a bit outside of this tutorial. So ultimately just remember that you can use selections to crop individual layers so that you can fit them in specific areas of your photos or graphic design projects. Now before we go on to the third and final technique, if you want to get access to the image files of my future lessons be sure to join my email list by clicking the link below. That way you'll not only get helpful tips and tricks every week to improve your editing, but you'll also get a download link to YouTube tutorial files that I only share with my email list. So again, if you wanna make sure to get follow along images in my next tutorial, be sure to click the link in the description and subscribe to my email list, it's totally free. Anyways, let's get back into it. Now for the third and final way that you can use selections to help level up your photo editing is with object removal, because especially 
especially when there's objects that you want to remove that are covered by a particular edge that you need to keep. In this particular case, that would be the edge of the ice cream that we want to keep, and we want to remove this spoon that's coming out of it. So typically, this would be very hard to do with just a manual adjustment, such as the clone stamp tool or the remove tool, for example, because it's going to mess up all of these edges. Let me give you a quick example. If I grab the remove tool by pressing J, it's just found right here in the toolbar underneath the spot healing brush tool. I've got the remove tool active now. If I go and click and drag over this area and then cover up some of the ice cream like so, and then press enter to have Photoshop automatically remove that area, you can see that the ice cream cone has become a bit distorted and it doesn't have the same perfect edge that we had previously. So rather than having to go and manually rebuild this, we can use a selection so that Photoshop does not have any chance of messing up the edges that we want to keep, which in this case is the ice cream cone. So pressing Command or Control Z to undo this, I'm going to create a selection around the edges that I want to keep. In this case, I'm going to use the pen tool to define that selection area because it's going to give me the most precise selection. So accessing the pen tool by pressing P, I'll just go and click around the edge of this ice cream like so, and then just shape this path, which will eventually represent our selection area to follow where we want Photoshop to not distort after we have our object removal adjustments applied. So I'm just going to continue around this spoon like so, to essentially create a path that will follow around the entire object that we want to remove. So I'll continue to go up to here, around the ice cream this way, over there as well, and then of course down and around the edge like so, all the way around until we have a little bit of breathing room on the other side of the object that we want to remove. So I'll go and add my path just out here and then continue all the way around like so until we connect back to the beginning. So now we have a path around the object that we want to remove. And to turn this into a selection, we just have to right click and then go to make selection. With that complete, I'll set the feather radius to 0.5 pixels and click OK. And this will create a new active selection. Now with this active selection, we're only able to paint inside of this active selection area. To give you an example of this, I'll click on the new layer icon and then grab my brush tool so that you can see exactly what areas can be adjusted. So with that new layer selected and my brush tool active, I'll just be painting black in this particular case. But as you can see, if I I drag way over here outside of the selection area, nothing happens. But as I go and drag inside of the selection area, I can make that adjustment. So while an active selection is on your canvas, you can only edit the contents of that active selection. So to apply this into object removal terms, I'll just undo those brush strokes. We can now use the remove tool or any other object removal adjustment that you would like. If you don't know any of them, you can learn about them in this video here. But I'm going to be using the remove tool in this case, so I will select select the remove tool with the new layer selected that I created above my image layer so that we're editing non-destructively. With sample all layers checked and remove after each brush stroke unchecked, I'll just go and paint over the spoon just outside of the edges that I want to remove here and all the way down to the ice cream cone. And because we have that active selection, we cannot paint outside of the lines. I'll now press enter to remove that object like so. It messed up a little bit of the area down here, but we can just paint over it once again and press enter a couple of times to refine that until we're happy with the result that we get. With a little bit of back and forth with the remove tool, you can see that we have now filled in that area and the edges of the ice cream cone are left intact because of our active selection area and all of it was done non-destructively on this separate layer like so. Now to remove that selection, we just need to press command or control D to deselect that. And now we have that nice edge around our ice cream cone. And if you have any harsh edges that need touching up, you can just go through with something like your clone stamp tool afterwards and just sample an area nearby by holding alt or option. Make sure you're using a relatively hard brush such as 80%. And then we can just sample an area by holding alt or option and then just paint and round out any potential issues that we have, which in this case was just that pointy corner of the ice cream. So now that looks pretty good to me and our spoon is gone, everything is done non-destructively on that object removal layer just like so. So this is another really, really helpful way that you can use selections to improve your editing inside of Photoshop. So although selections are obviously great for removing backgrounds, they can be used in plenty of other ways too, as you learned here. However, if you're itching to learn more about creating better selections in Photoshop, make sure to click this video right here to learn more about that, where we get really in depth with all the easiest and best selection methods in Photoshop.